Feeling supersonic, give me gin and tonic. You could have it all, but how much would you like it? Not much. Welcome to Blackbridge Sound, the greasiest home recording channel on YouTube. Today we are going to be showing you a way to use only five microphones to mic up an entire big greasy double bass drum set. Let's go. So you may remember a while back, we did a video where we tried out the Glenn Johns miking technique. Now Glenn Johns, world famous producer engineer from back in the day, worked with the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, loads of different bands. He came up with this miking technique that's very popular and it's still used today, which uses only three microphones. J-Rock, why don't you explain what the Glenn Johns miking technique is? So in his technique, you just take a kick drum mic and then you put an overhead mic above the snare, facing straight down at the snare. And then you take another overhead mic and you put it kind of above the floor tom, also facing directly at the snare. And you put them like an equal distance from each other. Yeah, so one mic, if, if I'm the drummer, one mic's coming down here, one mic is kind of coming. So the mics are kind of picking up into that center of the drum set. So here's a little example of what we did with the Glenn Johns technique. So you'll notice there that's a really cool way to get a very natural, even sounding drum sound. And it works really well with a standard, you know, four piece kit. But we're gonna dive a bit deeper now and listen to what each mic is doing on its own. So this is the mic that's above the floor tom. Now you'll notice, because this mic is pretty much right near the floor tom, you're getting a lot of that side of the kit. And there is quite a bit of bass drum coming through as well. Now here is the mic that is above the snare drum. So you're getting kind of a mix of the whole kit. Now, if you have a bigger drum set than your standard four piece kit, you may be an extra bass drum, more rack toms, maybe a side snare or a side floor tom or whatever. The microphones being here, you're not gonna get too much of that other stuff. You're not gonna get a lot of that left bass drum. You're not gonna get a lot of that side snare or rack tom. So we came up with kind of a variation on it where you do everything the same. You have your overhead mic above the snare drum. You have your overhead mic above the floor tom but you add a second kick drum mic, because obviously you're adding another bass drum, and the real kicker is you add another overhead on the left. Pretty much exactly where the floor tom overhead is, you're gonna add the pretty much same setup, but on the left hand side, which would pick up maybe your side snare or your other rack toms. In this case, we have nine rack toms, we have a side snare, we have a left bass drum. Let's check it out, let's toast it up and see how it sounds. We have three Lewitt LCT240 Pros, condenser microphones, not overly expensive microphones. You can use whatever though. Probably best though, if you use some kind of pair of microphones, for the, at least for the two side ones. Experiment with different combinations. This is our version though of the Glenn Johns miking technique.
All right, Jay Rock. What did you think of our variation on the Glenn Johns miking technique? Yeah, I like it. I think it's really good, like uh, for big kit anyways, right? Because you do lack a little bit if you only use the three mics in the Glenn Johns technique. You lack a little bit of like the other kick drum if you're adding another kick drum. And then since we have so many toms, you kind of miss that side of the kit if you don't have that other mic over there. The other thing I like about it is now you can take those two side mics and you can pan them like 100% left and right and then leave your other one in the center. And it's just, it gives you such a wider image. Cause I know with what he does, like you're getting an image like this and he only really pans it like maybe like 20% left and right. Whereas now you're getting like that 100% stereo image, you know? So I think, it, I think it works really well for this. Yeah, I find that it's very natural cause you're getting the bulk of kind of what you're hearing is coming from that top microphone, that one that's over the snare drum, that's kind of getting most of the kit. But like we said before, that microphone, the farther the drums are away from that central microphone, the less you're gonna hear it. So those two side mics just kind of, even though they're panned and maybe they're a little bit quieter in the mix, it's just filling in the extra space and it's giving it that width. So we're just gonna take a quick look at uh, what's going on in the mix in this, because the beauty of this miking technique is it's so simple to get a good sound and there's not a whole lot of processing going on. So if we look on here, we've got our two kick drums and they're both processed identically, obviously as you would. So we just got a bit of EQ on it. You could EQ these to be a lot less extreme than this if you want, but I kind of like that uh, little bit of a mid scooped sound, little bump in the low end, little bump in the high end. It sounds good to me. Got a little bit of compression going on. Hit the compressor pretty hard with the kick. The snare compressor. Which is, well, I say snare, but the overhead above the snare. I'm pretty sure these are all pretty much the same and it's like, I just kind of set the compressors the same for all the overheads and it kind of worked. And the EQs are pretty much the same. So if I pull up the EQ, the only one that was a bit different was the snare. I put the low cut kind of a lot higher than I did on the, on the two side mics. Just there was a little bit too much low end and too much mud coming through that mic. So this one's the snare one that I had. And you can see with the uh, with the other two overheads, just the low cut really changed. The little bump in the high to bring out a little bit of shine in the cymbals is uh, consistent with all three of them. And this is the only change. And that's pretty much it, other than there's a little bit of an EQ cut on the drum bus, just in the low end just to clean up some of that mud. And I've got a compressor running on that, which is less about compressing it and more about bringing up the volume for a YouTube video, being that it's just a drum track. So yeah, there you go. Pretty simple setup. So for you mixing this technique, like what did you find was like the biggest difference versus, you know, going for kind of a close mic approach? I found it easier, I guess, because you don't have to spend all the extra time getting rid of frequencies you don't want in the toms so you can bring them up in the mix, right? Because there's a lot of mud in there that just isn't good for a modern sounding mix, so you kind of sculpt it out. If you're gonna mix and layer guitars and stuff, you mean too, right? Yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah. Like for someone that's just maybe doing covers or something like that, or kind of drum focused stuff, I mean, it works really well for that. And well, you could you could do like an old school style record as well. Totally. Well, that's how they did all the Zeppelin stuff. Yeah, back in the 70s, day. 80s rock, even like 90s rock stuff, you could probably get away with it too and it would sound great. Now, what I find about this technique, coming from more of the drummer's perspective, less so than the engineer's perspective, is you can have the drums really ringy if you have drums wide open, not a lot of, no dampening and stuff like that, tuned nice and kind of open, you get a lot of nice tone out of the drums, but that becomes tricky, like J-Rock just said, when you're mixing it because you get funky frequencies and stuff like that. But with this technique, you can have your drums really open, like both on my kit at home 
and on this kit, they're wide open, there's no dampening on anything. And those funky frequencies, you're not really getting because the mics are so far away. Yeah. You're just getting so much more of that fundamental tone of the drum. Yeah, because those those weird like frequencies and overtones and stuff, they're really quiet in comparison to the drum, but when the mic is really close, it picks them it up picks a them lot. Up. Yeah. And like sometimes it'll pick up like, you'll be getting floor tom ringing every time you hit the kick drum and stuff like that. And, when you back the mics away, you don't really notice that, so. Total. Like for me as a drummer, I like the feel of playing wide open drums. When you get into dampening with close miking and you know, moon gels and things like that, sometimes it can kind of take away from the feel I find, sometimes depending on what you're doing. Whereas I find it feels a bit more natural, at least for me, to play with wide open drums, no dampening, nothing on it. And yeah. with this kind of microphone technique, you're not gonna get those weird ringing frequencies because the microphones are so far away from the drum heads yeah. on those toms specifically. So yeah. by the time those ringy frequencies reach those microphones, the, you, don't even, you don't even hear it. You're getting so much more of that fundamental tone. Was that the transient? Is that what it's called? Mm. The, tra the transient went like, bah. Yeah. The spike in the- Like the initial spike, yeah. Yeah, you're getting so much more of just the boom, not the boom. It's of a tom, right? So, and I like it too for my setup at home because I can move that drum set out and I can put in a different kit there if I want. And long, as long as I place the kit in the same place, like if I wanna use my Zeppelin setup or if I wanna use a different kit, the microphone technique doesn't change. The kit can change. You know, for my setup at home, I don't wanna be messing around with tom mics because it's, you know, getting all the gain set up. And stuff. I like a nice setup where I can just leave it. This is a great setup if you're kind of a minimalist like myself. All the toms, you go around the kit, you know, it's nice and even. If you just had the one overhead mic, you know, you know, kind of go through the roll and you know, it gets quieter. It would get quieter as you go. So it's just a nice even sound. What? What? You call yourself a minimalist. You what? have nine toms and a double layer rack. I didn't even pick this kit. It's my dad's kit. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, I think this this miking technique though is really a nice easy way to get a nice great, I mean you're not gonna have tons of control in the mixing like from the engineering side of it necessarily because you're not gonna get that kind of control in the mixing process but if you're like me just making videos in the basement kind of thing, you don't need that. Yeah, but at the same time too, you're not gonna use this kind of technique for something where you would need all that extra control. You're no. going for more of like an organic band in the room, 70s rock kind of sound anyways, mm -hmm. so I don't think that would be an issue for anyone that wanted to do this. The trickiest thing though we need to figure out now is what are we gonna call this thing? You know, can't call it just the Glenn Johns double bass thing. It's the Blackbridge Sound Glenn Johns technique, Glenn Johns Blackbridge Sound technique. What are we gonna call it? What's the... How about the Black Glenn technique? The Black Glenn miking technique. You heard it here first. Let us know though, if you have any ideas what we should call this miking technique, maybe the greasy Glenn Black Bridge miking technique. Glenn John's Black Bridge miking technique. Let us know in the comments though, if you got any sharp names for us and we'll definitely start calling it that. But I'm really happy with how this really, you know, this how the sound works. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I feel like you could still do it on like a four piece kit too, right? Cause if you wanted like a wider stereo image than what you would get with just the Glenn John's, like you just add that second mic, you hit those pans, there you go. Wider Absolutely. image. Yeah, no, it's a really cool way and uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out there, but uh, we want to know what you thought of the Black Glenn miking technique. Let us know in the comments what you thought, and maybe let us know if you've tried any other minimalist miking techniques to mic up big, massive drum sets. Let us know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button, like button, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. You've been great. We've been greasy, and we will see you next time. Welcome to... Holy fuck. Can't escape the squeak. Figured out how to do it. Welcome to Black...